Well, one of the things about Monster when it came out uh, in November of 94 was that it was the first album that you had put out since you had stopped touring as a band after Green. And obviously, Out of Time, Automatic for the People, you've been here on the show talking about those reissues and how important they were to, I think, the creative rebirth, or at least, you know, continuing genesis of R.E.M. But with Monster, clearly you made an album that you meant to play live. It's gnarly, it's <laughs> loud, um, and actually people had objections to that at the time because they had, you know, a lot of the people who had come into R.E.M. were thinking, losing my religion. Instead, they're getting, what's the frequency, Kenneth? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was that was it a specific plan to make a record that you could take out and really just play really loud? Yes, it was. We we knew we had uh, we had two great records of really beautiful, morbid, sometimes slow and mid tempo acoustic music, which would probably translate really well live. On the other hand, you don't want two hours of that. So uh, we wrote a record that we could really turn the amps up and buzz it out and have a good time with it. Was there a particular song or a, a riff or something that sort of marked? okay, we know where we're going, maybe something Peter came up with or something that uh, either of you sort of genesis? I think what happened is... Genesis, that's Peter, an interesting a, word. A verb. A new, new, new verb, verb yeah. genesis. <laughs> oh, I, think, I think Peter got an amp that had a... Um, a wah -wah, the, the, the tremolo. A tremolo, yeah, that's, a tremolo effect. That helped somewhat. Yeah. And that's that, I think that's where cr Crush with Eyeliner started, and I think that might have been where... Uh, not Kenneth, because you, you, you wrote Kenneth, right? Yeah. Um, it was pretty early on. But it, the idea of, of 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 approaching loud, raucous, raw music from a distance, uh, and being fanboys and going back to the one part of our um, our adolescence that none of us had really explored as REM, which is of course glam rock, uh, that was really exciting. And it felt, you know, we had not been in the public eye really since 1989 as a, as a, as a live band. The world had changed dramatically and partly because of us. And so we needed to respond and we needed to respond in a really big way. Because one, who one we of the then. things about those songs, if you look at, you know, the track listing on it, uh, obviously Frequency Kenneth, you know, that quote from the guy who like, you know, stopped Dan Rather right. on the street. But, you know, there's a question that people were asking at that point, you know, politically, socially, uh, crushed with eyeliner, I don't sleep, I dream. Um, I took your name, Bang and Blame. There was, it's a record of musical turbulence, but there's a lot of turbulence in the writing as well. You know, just things that you were, I think, expressing in some ways, you know, with a little more uh, impressionism, imp impressionism, but also kind of a weird, dark clarity. Let's unwrap that a little because I haven't given it that much thought to tell you the truth. Do you want to talk about it? Do you, why don't you two talk about it and I'll try to comment well, the, when I can. The, the the themes of this record are, are really they're sort they're personal they're they're about uh, self awareness self expression identity uh, you know really actually pretty heavy complex themes uh, not not on a world scale scale but on an internal scale it's like very strange personal. currency suggests all this weird kind of nervous nervous energy that doesn't really have a place to go yet but it's also done with with a, with an there's an ironic distance for this entire record i mean the fact that you know michael shaved his head i'm wearing those incredible suits i spoke you know. about my sexuality for the first time publicly that was a big yeah. one we we took a lot of chances on this record yeah. and but we were at the top of our game we had never sold so many records as out of time and automatic for the people and i felt like we we had this audacity and this confidence. To why do, not be a monster? Why not? Why not? Yeah. Why not really push ourselves into some very uncharted territory, and not not repeat automatic, not not do everybody hurts part two. I didn't want that. None, no one no. in the band wanted that, and I think ultimately the audience wouldn't have wanted that either. 